how to answer an exam standard question in 10 easy steps. Step 3. Now what we want to look at are verbs, nouns and marks. As I said earlier, we are here to score marks. But when it comes to, well, particularly discursive questions, understanding what the question is requiring means that we must break down the question and get its key salient points out. So looking at our requirements again, the verb is the instruction. We have to be very careful what this instruction means. Now sometimes the instruction is obvious, other times the instruction requires us to think about it a bit. Some of you may be aware of something called Bloom's Taxonomy and the distinction between low-level instructions such as state and high-level instructions such as evaluate and all of the other ones in between. Now I haven't got time or the inclination to get into that just here. All I would suggest is that we have to fully understand what the examiner means if he says explain or describe or discuss because they all have a very different meaning. Secondly, we have to consider the noun or the subject matter. What is it that the examiner wants us to talk about? Sometimes again this is obvious. But other times we have more than one noun or alternatively what we see is that we have one subject in relation to another. That's very common. And we have to make sure that we answer the question as set. Finally, as I said before, I'm only interested in marks. So everything is about trying to break up larger questions into smaller components that we can easily uh, the score marks on. So, if we look at part A, calculate the net present value of buying the new machine and comment on your findings. Well, very simple here, it's a computation. And with a computation, you either know how to do it or not. And it's a basic NPV computation, so you better know this in the exam. The only thing I would highlight here is the word and. This is critical in the exam because it immediately splits the requirement into two sub-requirements. Here, on the one hand, we have to calculate the MPV, and of course that will be the majority of the marks. But then we will have a couple of marks, maybe, to comment on the result. It is very common in these exams, particularly F9 for some reason, that people tend to love the calculation, but they deign not to comment, and thereby throw away some very easy marks. If we look at part B, again it's pretty simple. Calculate before tax return on capital employed, bracket accounting rate of return, based on the average investment, and comment on your findings. Again, calculate and comment. So we've got a five marker here, but really it's two. It's a three or four marker and it's a one or two marker. I say one or two and three or four, I could easily go to the mark allocation in the ACCA website to see what the mark allocation truly was. But what I'm suggesting here is that when you get into the exam hall, you, you won't be able to do that. And so you have to make your estimate, your guesstimate of how many marks are available in each place. Step three. Well, OK, this is where things get slightly more exciting. Uh, firstly, the instruction. Discuss the strengths and weaknesses of internal rate of return in appraising capital investments. Now, what does discuss mean? Well, yes, you have to understand precisely what you're being asked to do. Now, discuss normally means talk about a range of different elements focusing with regard to the subject. Now here, we're talking about strengths and weaknesses of IRR in investment appraisal. Fine. If you take discuss further, most of the time, there, there is some sort of pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses, advantages and disadvantages about the discussion. The subject, internal rate of return in investment appraisal. Well, OK, we could talk about linking those two together, but I think it would be very common to talk about IRR in investment appraisal. So the focus, really, is about IRR itself. Very simple, if you know what you're talking about. So, 
Here's my suggested answer plan. Each point a two mark answer, two strengths and two weaknesses. If we do that, two strengths, two weaknesses with regard to IRR, we're going to get seven or eight marks quite easily. So quite easy to break up here, but I want you to do this each and every time because some of these requirements are a little bit more complicated. So in summary, firstly, remember the rule of AND. When we have AND in a requirement, it's not one requirement, but it's two. Secondly, plan your answer in relation to scoring marks. We only care about marks. We don't care about anything else. And so what we want to do as much as possible is to break up that question. If we can break it up, we can take larger requirements, seven to ten marks, and break them down into two and three mark components that are easier to answer. And thirdly, make sure you practice this again and again and again with all exams.